So if you want to add authentication into your React application in less than five minutes, well, in this particular video, we will look into a really awesome React library that allows you to opt in and easily integrate authentication into your React application for like saving it with cookies, GWT, and handling all the sending and, and the redirects with React Router DOM and all that creepy stuff that you are afraid of with this really awesome and plug and play library. So the awesome React library is called React AuthKit. And this basically just gives you a full kit to basically be able to add authentication or integrate authentication into your React application without going into like you know, spending the time to go to the crap of adding authentication to cookies and saving it and, and retrieving it and doing all those creepy stuff that you don't really want to do uh, because it just, it keeps doing it. Especially if you have like an application that you, that's like going to be like super simple. You don't have any custom authentication method or you don't want to just customize this straight to the point authentication. So you can easily use that to get it working as fast as possible. So this library is very like what I said before, and it's very easy and has really good uh, documentation in here so that's actually what I used in here and in fact it actually uses the auth provider or uses the context API the react context API to be able to access and provide all of those through a context and you can access this from anywhere inside of your react application so currently my react application looks something like this it's pretty straightforward so authentication obviously what you want to add it to is actually the login form so this is my login form you got an email password you can have as many fields as you want it can all integrated but mostly like for authentication what you need is actually one email or username or both plus of obviously a password in here so that's that's my form in here and of course i'm going to use this form to use it with like the auth kit in here and to basically just like integrate everything as like as fast as possible and to be able to go ahead and redirect and control whether the user is authentic skater or not to be able to do the redirections and all sorts of stuff. And before jumping into the actual implementations, I wanna, I wanna just like go ahead and take a quick look into the actual server. So the API server, and of course, I'm not gonna go ahead and implement that. So I already assume that you already implemented that and you have that ready, whether you're using a RESTful API, a fake API, I don't know, something else like your own custom uh, server. So for me in here, I'm using Express with Node.js. So I'm building a custom RESTful API with authentication using Passport.js. So it's actually pretty simple. So just like for the login here, uses an email, password, it checks the email, if it does exist and everything, and he uses GWT. And that's what I assume that you can use, but you can use it with any other kind of way. So the auth kit in there, the library can work with anything really. So GWT obviously is just like the preferred way. So you can start in cookies or either on the local storage. Uh, so here I'm just generating the GWT token and I'm just returning that on the response as the token. And of course, on the front end, we can go in and access it and store it in the cookies. And of course, I'm not gonna do that. It's actually the library or the auth kit library that's gonna take care of this behind the scenes. And if you just quickly test this API in here, I've got the register in here where you can register. So you got already thanks for registering. So this you add like the full name, email and password. And we try to log in just to enter your password in here and you enter or sorry, your email and your password and do send and you're going to get the token generated for you. And of course, the token is going to be like lasted for a set amount of like minutes, it can just become a day or so. And um, yeah, so that's that's pretty simple. All right, nice. Now let's go ahead and jump into a React project. And let's try to go ahead and integrate the React Auth Kit to make authentication work out of the box. Now, first, you need to go ahead and install the Auth Kit. So you just call the React Auth Kit in here, hit enter, and this go ahead like uh, you need to do add. Sorry for that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be added for you. I already did add that. So after finishing this one, you're going to have to go ahead and like grab the auth provider. So what you want to do is actually go to the index, like where you're going to start the rendering process. So this is like the roots of our index in here. And this is where we try to get like, you know, render the whole tree of our React components. So one of the first, what we need to do in here is actually to go ahead and use the auth provider. You can go ahead and ignore those. There's just like, they're not neater or something. 
I just care about this auth provider in here. So we do auth provider and you give it the auth type, it could be either local storage or cookie. So where to save that obviously a cookie is a lot more safer. I uh, got the auth name in here. So what is the name of the cookie that you just like is going to store the auth. So I just you know, you can name it whatever uh, you can have a cookie domain. So whether it's like what is the domain name of the current cookie and if the cookie is secure or not so it's going to be only sent for https um so for this one i'm just going to set it to false because we are on development only in here we're not using https but of course make sure to set this to true when you're using https and the other thing i need to make sure you do is actually wrap this auth provider you wrap this one on top of like the browser router the react dom router in here or the react router dom you need to like put that as a child of the auth provider otherwise it won't work properly and if you head over inside of the application itself going to have of course routes i have the home route in here and this route should be a protected route so i'm going to use that later on to basically present this one and we got the login route and this is where the magic is going to start happening so if i head over in here this is actually already implemented like most of it we got some components and i'm using the some you know third party library to do those components so you're already pr pretty much familiar with that like a login button uh, an input and everything so they are just like basic and straight to the point now the other thing in here what i really um like you need to make sure to do is you got like an unsubmit you can use formic or something you're using formic in here for state management or for like you know form and everything and the main part that you need to focus about is on on the submit so on submit here what i'm doing is just i'm doing axios post and I'm sending like the values in here to log in to our route to our server in here. Basically, that's that's pretty simple. So we got the values in here, and I got the response back. Now, once I get the response back, that's where the authentication gonna start. So this is this is the part where we need to authenticate the user and save the credentials or save the token received back from the login on the cookies and do all of those. And this is where the React Auth Kit library is gonna come into the play. So I'm gonna do const sign in. I'm going to do use sign in. And of course, you need to import this use sign in from the React auth kit that we just installed. Okay, awesome. Now this sign in function in here, this is going to take care of everything from starting to the cookies and authenticating and do all this kind of stuff. So this particular sign in function is going to take care of everything from authenticating and saving into cookies with other metadata. So this is like the you know most important part that you need to call in here for the authentication to take place. Okay, now I need to do sign in. And I just call this function right here. And I just, you know, provide it with some couple of different uh, options in here. So the first one, we need to provide it with the actual GWT token we received from the response. So all you need to simply do is just like response dot data dot token. And obviously that's returned by the server. So depending on your implementation, you need to choose a different property name in here. So you can have like expires in. So this is like, it's going to set the what when the cookie is going to actually expire. So this is in minutes. So I'm going to say, for example, it's going to expire in an hour or something. Of course, you can implement that a little bit better uh, with the server and everything. Uh, maybe you got like a token type. So this is it's going to tell like which token type is it. So by default, it's going to be beer. And this is what you want to be for GWT. So you're going to be using like a beer token in here. And you can provide the auth state as well. So what the auth state is, is basically the information of the user. So like, for example, username and email, of course, not a password, obviously, but you might want to do that. So for the auth state, I'm going to do values, or I'm just going to do email, I'm going to do values dot email, I'm not going to include the password, obviously. So this function is going to take care of like sending the cookie and everything. Now, once you call this, you are basically ready to go. So if head back to our application in here and try to put an email like alexmail.com that we just read with. And of course, I'm going to put the password in here. So alex123, I guess. So hit enter and it's clear to see immediately like sets the cookies and I'm actually on the application. So I'm going to cookies for a local host 2001. And I got into the application like tab in here. And those are the cookies that are being saved by the sign in function for us. It's pretty nice. And if you look at it, you're going to have like the auth. So this is actually the original auth token for us, the auth type and when the actual one's going to be like expire or something. And this is the actual data that you stored. And of course, you can access all of those through our hooks from the auth kit library as well. And you can easily manage without going into the details and creating custom functions to retrieve this and that and, and keep lingering. So you can easily and very quickly integrate that. And now by just looking at the documentation, there are 
couple of different stuff that you can implement from refresh token to private route and sign on and everything. Now, what I want to do is actually the private route because it's very important feature. Now, a private route obviously is going to like allow you to protect a particular route. So it's just going to be like available when the user is logged in and it's going to redirect you to log in if the user hits like a route that is not supposed to go ahead and see or it's just not not authorized at all. So this is actually the API It's pretty simple. And I want to actually go ahead and, and implement that. So to do that, I'm going to go to the op dot time in here. And I'm going to do um, so it's, I'm going to have this like go inside. Okay, sorry. So I'm going to home and I'm going to do require auth. And I'm going to put inside of it um, the, I'm just going to do login path. And in here, just like you're providing with a login path. So whenever he tries to hit that, it's going to go ahead and redirect it to the, like the login path that you see in here. So he says, Oh, you need to log in first or something. Okay, so saving that getting back in here going to the application. And if we try, for example, right now, we're actually logged in, right, we got everything in here saved. Now, if we go to the home, which is just for slash, click enter, it says, Oh, welcome home, bud. And if I go ahead and clear out all the stuff in here, and I just go ahead and refresh, it's going to take me back straight into the login because it knows that oh, I'm not logged in. So it just took me back there navigate me back there. And then this is of course, it's working alongside the react router DOM. Also, for example, you got like a logout button instead of the home or whatever you want to do it. I'm just using like a and a simple example in here. So I'm going to either log out or sign out. So I'm going to do use sign out. And this is another hook. And I love actually using hooks, it just makes things super easy, and super at fast to like integrate. So I'm going to do sign out in here. And this will go ahead like sign out from from the page and just take us back. And if you want to take this even further, you can go ahead and like use the navigate from the react like router DOM. So I'm going to do use navigate, do another function called log out. And here, I'm going to do sign out first, then I'm going to call navigate back to the login path, right. And this would be a little bit more robust for us. So I'm going to go ahead and just like replace this one with this. And if I just try to log in right now, I'm going to have this saved, I'm going to go to home. And now if I click log out, it's going to take me back in and I just like refresh this one because they're just completely deleted. So that means the user is no longer authenticated or logged in. And for example, if you want to send a request after authenticating your X application with the cookies that are already saved. So if you have like your server, for example, right here, I have my server using cookies. So it actually supports getting the GWT from the cookies and parsing and do all of that. So make sure your server does handle that first properly before jumping into you know, the next step. And then for example, in here, all you need to do, for example, you got another button that's going to like after you authenticate on your homepage in here, you can have like get payments. And this just does a request to the payment API with credentials that you must include with credentials. So like Axios or any other, um, you know, HTTP client in here can actually send the cookies alongside the request in here. And of course, the response is going to have like, it's going to be passing through correctly, it's going to be authenticated and everything. So it's going to work 100%. So for example, if we try this out, as you see, we are already logged in, if we do like get payment in here, I'm going to get the response back, like data, you have total of like, to $400 or whatever. So this actually passing if you get to the network in here, go to payments, you're going to see I uh, look at the cookie section, and you see like all the cookies are being sent through and it's being like completely authorized to get into that request.